Hello everyone, welcome back to Bytes of CEC. So we are doing the part 2 of the lecture uh, on convolution neural networks. So in the previous lecture, we have seen that how an MLP transitions into a convolution neural network by the virtue of transition invariance and um, locality. So we are now interested about the local informations in and around a particular pixel. So therefore, this was the equation that we have actually found and your input weight information now loses the location information. And this is also known as the kernel. And this is basically a cross correlation that is happening over here. And in this particular lecture, we will be learning about padding and stride feature map and receptive field. So for this particular lecture, we are considering that the value of u is 0 for the ease of calculation, of course. So I'll just show you that how this cross correlation actually happens. And based on this, padding and stride feature map and receptive fields will also be explained. So now this is your input matrix. This one, the one in white and every um like every number represents the information of the of a particular pixel at that position and this the one in yellow this two cross two matrix this is your kernel so what happens here is the kernel actually in a sliding window fashion moves from top left and moves towards right till the end and finds out the information, the two cross two information of the neighboring pixels. So let's start, uh, let's get started from this one, the topmost uh, pixel on the, the topmost and the leftmost pixel. So this is going to be your first sub matrix to be considered while calculating this correlation operation. So now in this sub matrix, this is your 0, 0. Basically, in the original matrix also, this is 0, 0, this is 0, 1, this is 1, 0, and this is 1, 1. But actually, for every matrix, this we are just going to be considering a sub-matrix. The other elements will just be disregarded for the moment. Uh, so, in cross-correlation, what happens is, okay, so this is also your 0, 0, this is 0, 1, this is 1, 0. And this is your 1, 1. So the elements at the same uh, positions will be multiplied. And then all these products are summed up together. So these two zero zeros will be multiplied. This 2 that is in position 0, 1. And this 1 in position 0, 1 will be multiplied. Then this 2 that is in position 1 0 will be multiplied with this 8 which is also in position 1 0 and this 5 in position 1 1 will be multiplied with 3 in position 1 1 corresponding position 1 1 and all these products will be summed up and now this is your output uh, this is going to be the output matrix so the information regarding this pixel value will be 0 into 1 plus 1 into 2 plus 2 into 8 plus 3 into 5 which is going to be 33 and since we are trying to find the information the neighboring information for this pixel therefore this value will be put up at this position now it will move one position to the right and now this is your window of reference and since I said that we are only going to be considering the window that is a sub matrix, so now this is your new 0, 0, this is your new 0, 1, this is your 1, 0, and this is your 1, 1. So again, once more, 0, zeros will be uh, multiplied, that is 2 and 0 will be multiplied, then 0, 1s will be multiplied, that is 3 and 1, corresponding 1, 0, that is 5 and 2. And 1, 1, that is 2 and 3 will be multiplied. And the result in 19. And since this is our pixel of reference, 19 will be put up at this position. Again, it will be shifted to this position. And again, reordering the indices. This is 0, 0. This is 0, 1. This is 1, 0. And this is 1, 1. And 11 will be the value at, of this pixel. Now we again move to this part. And here, again, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Therefore, the value is 16, and 16 will be put up at this position. But now the problem is, when you are trying to shift one position to the right, 
your kernel window actually will be here and since there are no pixels at these positions therefore the kernel cannot shift any further so therefore information regarding this pixel position is lost in the output matrix so what happens here is it will just slide one position down and this is going to be your window of reference and as before this is going to be your 0 0 this is your 0 1 this is your 1 0 and this is your 1 1 so we are just not regarding what is the true uh, value of the indices of the input matrix we are just interested about the sub matrix as i have uh, shown you here so the value for this will be 32 and 32 will be put up at this position now again the same problem persists in this row this row and now suppose we are at this position and uh, the window of reference is this one so basically the last sliding for this row and now it is supposed to slide one row down but here also the same problem persists there are no pixels at these position so the information regarding the pixels at the uh, last row will also be lost in this case and this is going to be your final matrix now this particular output matrix is also sometimes known as the feature map and feature map is basically the it can be regarded as the learned representations or the features in the spatial dimensions that is width and height to the subsequent layer so this is basically a more cleaner without just doing away with all those extra that i had added before so um suppose you have this uh, the number of rows in your input matrix is nh and the number of columns in your input matrix is nw that is height and width actually and this is say kh and this is like the number of rows in your uh, input matrix uh, input uh, sorry kernel is kh and uh, the number of columns in your kernel is kw therefore the in your uh, the the feature map will have a dimension of nh minus kh plus 1 and nw minus kw plus 1 as you can see here we have the number of rows 1 2 3 4 so there are four rows and there are the cage value is 2 therefore 4 minus 2 plus 1 so your output matrix is supposed to have three uh, rows and it does have three rows and the nw in this case is going to be 1 2 3 4 and 5 so 5 and kw is 2 minus 2 plus 1 so this is going to be 4 right okay so so there are actually four rows in your output matrix so that really proves the point now we will learn about the receptive field so receptive field uh, can be well it is actually it refers to all the elements uh, from the previous layers that may affect the calculation of a particular element x during forward propagation so suppose this so i have just taken a 3 cross 3 matrix uh, of this input matrix so i have just shortened the information and that is for ease of calculation of course so now your output matrix it will be 3 minus 2 plus 1 so it is 2 and 2 so 2 cross 2 output matrix so now when we were calculating this say this is your x so the number of elements involved in the input matrix or in the previous uh, pass to calculate 33 was this window right so therefore this is the receptive field for 33 now suppose we are again we are um, 
making uh, like we are uh, using this kernel over this output feature like we are moving forward we are doing another pass to that so um, this is a two cross two matrix and this is a two cross two matrix so the output uh, matrix will be of dimension two minus two plus one and two minus two plus one that is one cross one which is this element now when we are trying to find out the uh, the the feature ma uh, sorry the receptive field for this particular uh, matrix so this entire matrix the entire output matrix of the previous layer is the receptive field for this one but what if we consider the original input matrix if we are trying to find out the receptive field with respect to the input image so in that case we will need to consider the receptive fields of all the elements involved in the in this particular layer so we have to and we actually the summation of all of these is the receptive field for this particular element so this was the receptive field for 33 this was the receptive field for 19 this was the receptive field for 32 and this is the receptive field for 11. so basically the entire input image becomes the receptive field for this particular pixel value or the hidden information value so now a problem with this kind of uh, like uh, this particular cross correlation is suppose you have a image of uh, say 240 cross 240 pixels and uh, a 5 cross 5 kernel matrix is uh, working on this so for the first layer it will be the output matrix will be of dimension 240 minus uh, 5 plus 1 that is a 236 cross 236 matrix so the number uh, the, the amount of information lost will be 4 cross 4 for the first layer and suppose we are uh, finding the information like we are computing the hidden information for 10 layers for 10 subsequent layers a 5 cross 5 kernel works on the you know the uh, output from the previous layer so for 10 layers this implementation goes on so ultimately a 40 cross 40 pixels will be lost and now the input uh, sorry the output um, your pixel information at the end of 10 layers will be just be of 200 cross 200 so from 240 cross 240 image now we have pixel information only of 200 cross 200 so that is quite a subsequent like quite a you know huge loss so in order to arrest that we have come up with padding so now padding is basically um, now suppose so what we are actually doing is uh, after this position the kernel cannot move any further to the right so what we are doing is we are just adding some extra rows and columns with a numerical value which will not add to any information like if we consider this value as zero now zero will not add anything to the like zero multiplied by zero is always a zero and uh, zero plus zero i, I mean some in x plus zero is always x so even if you add if you multiply the zero will not add any extra information which is somewhat unwanted so in this case now this was the master uh, like the output matrix had the dimension this so now say you have added like ph rows and pw columns so we are just considering ph for this particular case because pw i mean this is a very generic thing right nh ph nw pw whatever so now the number of rows 
after adding some ph rows will be nh plus ph in case of the input matrix so now the input matrix is of height this and when a kernel acts on it with number of uh, rows uh, kh the output will be ph plus nh minus kh plus 1 now suppose we want to keep the dimension of the input matrix and output matrix to be the same the original input matrix that is the input matrix without adding uh, the padding part so therefore now this is the output uh, matrix uh, dimension that is the uh, row dimension so this should be equals to nh okay so now this nh and this nh gets cancelled out and now if you add a padding like if your ph value is kh minus 1 you will be able to find the or you will be able to calculate an output matrix which will have the same um, dimension as the input matrix so there will be no pixel information loss so in this case the number of rows to be added is 2 minus 1 that is 1 and also for the width there will be one row uh, one column is to be added now also from the previous um, the way i showed you you all already know that this is where i need to add and this is also where i will need to add another row so now your uh, window from here can shift to this position so at this position so this is the output matrix this was the output matrix so there was no confusion with this part so we are now calculating these parts so 3 into 0 0 into 1 2 into 2 and 0 into 3 so 2 into 2 is 4 the rest are all zeros next we come to this position so this is going to be your window position so 2 into 0 this is going to be 0 this is going to be 0 so 1 into 2 that is 2 and now we are going to be considering so now here it can move to this part so 9 into 0 and 3 into 1 so this is going to be 3 and the rest is 0 and 0 these are zeros next we will move on to this position and the value at this position will be 1 and for this position it will be 0 so now there is no pixel information loss so this was a 3 cross 3 matrix originally without adding the padding and now the output matrix is also 3 cross 3 and this is going to be as i have explained before this is going to be the if you add some padding of say dimension ph cross pw this is going to be your output matrix dimension so it is not always that we would like to maintain the image uh, or the out but the like the input matrix size it can be we might like to uh, we, we might like it to be smaller we might like it to be even bigger so we can't uh, always like put this and move forward so so this is going to be the output matrix dimension when ph uh, rows and pw columns are padded to your input matrix now suppose your uh, kh that is the number of rows padded is zero sorry is odd so in that case ph by two rows will be padded on both sides of your input matrix and suppose the value of kh is even sorry i think i just made a mistake if the kernel is odd that is the height of the kernel is odd and this also um, yeah so if the height of the kernel is odd then ph by two rows are actually padded on both sides of the input matrix but if the height of the kernel that is the number of rows in your kernel is even 
this is actually the ceiling function and this is the floor function so basically one side will have the floor function of ph by 2 rows and the other side will have the floor function of sorry yes the this is going to have the ceiling function of ph by 2 um, rows and this is going to have the other side is going to have the floor function of pH by 2 rows and the floor is like if you have uh, something like 2.1 the floor of 2.1 will be 2 and the ceiling of 2.1 will be 3 so this is your floor and ceiling thing so uh, basically um, generally we prefer a kernel with actually um, the convolution kernels uh, or that is a that is a v generally we prefer that with odd height and width values because choosing an odd kernel has a benefit that we can preserve the dimensionality while padding with the same number of rows on uh, top and bottom and also the same number of columns on left and right so we generally prefer kernel with odd height and width values so next we will move on to the stride now we have added uh, like we have added the paddings and we have adjusted all the dimension and everything but sometimes for computational efficiency we might need to or we might like to down sample and especially that is uh, when uh, during the um, last layers we typically like to down sample that we we like to make the output matrix size smaller so we move our window more than one element at a time that is see up till now we have just by default we have uh, so suppose this was the uh, like if i consider the last picture so this was your we started with this window and by default we moved on to the moved like just one position to the right but we could also move more than one position to the right or more than one position down and that is we are we can skip the intermediate locations and this is particularly useful if the convolution kernel is large because it it actually captures a large area of the underlying image so in that case we generally we take a bigger stride so say for this particular example we consider that um, we are taking that is we will be sorry what is happening here okay we will be uh, skipping two um, columns and three rows and so this is your input matrix sorry this is your input kernel and this is your input matrix so we will start from this position so this is going to be this is your first window and this is going to have a value of zero and now instead of just sliding this way we will be sliding two ways to uh, two uh, positions to the right so one and two and this is going to be your next window position so this is zero this is going to be zero 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 one is zero one two this is two and two three six so two plus six that is eight and now we won't be able to move uh, further because you just have to shift two positions to the right so and there are no pixels and now we will be skipping the rows so we will be skipping actually three rows so originally we were at this position we used to slide down to this position but now we will be sliding down three positions down so one two and this is going to be your window of reference so that is six into one because zeros won't matter so six into one so this is going to be the 
output of this particular window and we will be moving two positions to the right that is here and here so this is going to be your reference window so 7 into uh, 0 is 0 8 into 1 is 8 so 8 comes here and these are 0 0 so naturally they won't be considered so this is going to be your sprite so uh, when you consider stride the output kernel size will be nh minus kh plus ph plus sh divided by sh and we take the floor function of that and similarly also for the width we will be considering the floor function so nw minus kw so this was basically instead of plus one here we in the original part we had plus one and we didn't have this part because one uh, whatever divided by one will be the same value so this is same as the previous equation since we were taking stride of one so by sh was never considered and by sw was also never considered so now instead of one we will be adding sw and also be dividing the entire thing by sw and we will we will be taking the floor function in case it's a decimal value for nh and like for the output um, height and width dimensions and for simplicity if we consider ph equivalent to kh minus 1 and pw equivalent to kh uh, kw minus 1 that is we are trying to preserve the um, like uh, the attempt to preserve not actually preserved if you take a bigger stride the values won't be preserved so if we just like to add sufficient pixel to preserve uh, the value of the input matrix as we have talked about in the previous slides so this will be equivalent to this part will become nh plus sh minus 1 divided by sh and nw plus sw minus 1 divided by s w so this is a simplified version if only we consider this we are just plugging in the value of ph and pw in this equation uh, sorry in this expression so the khs get cancelled out and of course this minus one comes in here minus one comes in here so that was all about padding and stride and feature map and receptive field so stay tuned for the next part so thank you for watching